never seen a lame man walk Never heard a dumb man talk Never seen a blind man see I promise you a change this thing Never seen a cancelled death Never seen all the poor get fed Never seen a prisoner set free I promise you a change this thing Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go. It's time for the Big C, Bigger T podcast. I'm your boy, Bigger T, coming at you from beautiful South Arkansas. And I'm joined, as always, by my best friend and co-host, Clint Clark. How see, you doing, buddy? See, man, I'm, you know, I enjoy the guest episodes, but I enjoy it better when you pretend like I exist. <laughs> so, uh, well, so. I tend to I tend to ignore you whenever I'm kind no, of like the you know the the one that wants to hang out with the popular kids at school yeah. you know and when it's when he when he can be around the popular kids he kind of ignores his other buddies you know are you talking about me <laughs> well I kind of am yeah he used <laughs> to do that to us back in high school sometimes sometimes yeah you every know. now every now mainly every is now. when you could hang out with Darren Neely yeah yeah, because he was a pretty cool cat. He, he's probably the coolest. He's well, probably... and he was the funniest guy to ever do announcements in a school ever. Yeah. Ever. No, they, they really were. They really were. Like, people, like, rushed to class to hear the announcements every morning yeah. just to hear what funny stuff Darren was going to say. So, now, wasn't he I don't a blame you. Of mega church in Texas? Yeah, he was, uh, he was a... Uh, um, like youth pastor and then uh, associate pastor, teaching pastor and stuff like that. And he still, like he still preaches and he does. Uh, I've had him come up and speak at like events for me and stuff like that. And he does some comedy stuff too. Yeah. You know, he, it's interesting when he went to seminary. Uh, one of his preaching professors told him. Uh, he said, "Look, Darren, you're funny," which everybody knew that, right? Right, yeah. He said, um, he said, but you need to learn how to use that properly. He said, because in like preaching, sometimes funny can be distracting. Like you want people in preaching, you want people to remember the main points yeah. you say, not the jokes you say necessarily. You're giving away a free lesson right here. I, I don't am. think people, you people realize what you're getting. Travis That's right. preaching for how long? Yeah. I don't know. I've never attended one single one of his sermons because I hear yeah. about it. Yeah. But but this is a free lesson. If you want free lesson. Free lesson. And so it. this professor wisely told Darren, he said, You need to go do some like open mic nights or something at comedy clubs and learn how to use comedy properly. And that'll help you use it in your sermons better. And so Darren did that and he started and he st went and did that. And so he's still like, uh, well, you, you know, the, when you were a kid, y'all went to that soar, the big like nationwide, yeah. you know, soar events. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There was several years in a row. He emceed that and was like the main, you know, one of the main guys at that and everything. So, yeah. Big things from the old green bar boy. But anyway, yeah, no, no, no. Big time, big time, big time. Not as big time as us because we 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 are Paul Feinbaum endorsed. We are. We well, yeah, he, exactly. Because Paul yeah, Feinbaum, one hundred percent. I wouldn't think something like that. Paul Feinbaum once said, "Hmm, that's interesting. I'm gonna have to check that out when confronted with one of our podcasts on an no. airplane." Well, here's the thing. I heard it third hand, so the story's been lost in translation. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I, this is the way I remember it going. Is Paul Feinbaum said that is literally the greatest podcast I've ever. Heard. Yeah, it's, it's somewhere in between uh, what I said and you said. And, and my goodness, that big C is striking. 
Yeah, that's. I'm sure that was that yeah. that came out of his mouth. Yeah, he's uh, a big, beautiful creature. And if he needed, if Paul Feinbaum needed more proof, all he had to do was listen to our last two weeks of podcast, Clint. Yeah. Because we had some really great guests and interviews. It started out a couple weeks ago with Bart Reed. Look, if you're not familiar with who Bart Reed is and you're listening to this one, you haven't listened to that episode, go back on the YouTube or Apple or wherever and listen to that episode, okay? You want well, some insight? That Devo was coming back, you know, right Yeah. Here. Like, well, and he's a guy that's worked with Nick Smith. He's worked with those guys, you know, uh, KK Robinson. I mean, lo lots of different players. And he, he just got his, you know, I mean, man, he, he texts back and forth with Eric Musselman, okay, on a regular basis. And so Bart was nice enough to come on here and he did a great job of uh, giving us some great information. And that won't be the last you hear of Bart on this podcast. Uh, he's going to come on again. And then last week, Clint, we had none other than Buck James, the six-time high school football coach, state champ, five in a row at Bryant, yeah. who had just shocked Arkansas by going and and just up and leaving Bryant and heading to Conway. Yeah, that entire episode was pretty much a holy snikes moment. It was like, dude, like it had just what had happened a week prior. Yeah. And we were just like, whoa. Well, yeah. we were actually going to have him on the week before, and uh, I decided not to bother him that week because, like, he announced, like, it got announced that, you know, like, that Monday we were going to have him, and I was like, yeah, he's busy right now. I'm going to leave him alone. I'll wait till next week. Well, I think everybody in the state of Arkansas was just like, why? Yeah. Why? You know, and I think he answered the question. He wanted a new challenge because – yeah, I don't know if winning state championships would get old, but yeah. but I mean, at that point, there's got to be a been there, done that. Like, well, this is so, a you know, wins one in Conway, but you know, hashtag. Well, and and, it, and that's the thing, Clint. It and there may be some other things that we're not, you know, he's not talking about or whatever. Who knows? That's up to him, and we don't care, right? Um, the thing is, you and I have both been around Conway for a long time. Uh, well, I haven't as much, but you you have I mean, I work. recently. I used to work there. I managed a sporting goods store there for a couple of years, and and uh, you know we grew up around that area. That that's a city that's waiting, man. Like if he can win it there, he's he's gonna have all the boosters and sponsors he wants because there's a lot of money in that town. And he's going to have a lot of support. There's a lot of, you know, I just know the way he works. Okay. And in Camden, he got a lot of the business people to support him. Mm -hmm. You know, he had a, he had a local dentist. I, I mentioned it in the podcast. Every Friday morning, those football boys got one of the best breakfasts I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Like they were getting right brand bacon, Jimmy Dean sausage. I mean, they were getting like, the top stuff okay scrambled eggs pancakes a whole spread every friday morning why are you eating the kids food travis huh why are you going to eat in the kids food well i only got to go once a once a semester because he oh, would okay. he would ask me to come speak to the players it was a it was at a local church and he would ask local ministers to come and and Did speak you up go when you went and talked to the kids did you bring up your field goal when you went? I'm, to I might have, I might have, I might have brought that up once or twice, maybe. You went full Al Bundy, didn't you? <laughs> I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> ah, 1993. Yeah, yeah, I, I might have, I might have done that. <laughs> okay. um, I'm sorry, <laughs> but anyway, but I mean, I just know the way he got. You know, the, the guy at the Ford place was a big supporter, you know, buying, you know, different things for him. I mean, like, he, he just got a lot of support. And then he also got the churches to support because the churches would would do pregame meals on those same Fridays. So, um, and Conway, I mean, he's been able to do the same thing in Bryant, and he's going to be able to do that in Conway. And the resources there are just – 
even bigger than they are in Bryant, really. And and the people are more hungry, I think, because they've tasted, you know, they've they've gotten to the playoffs and they run into Bryant and Buck James, you know. Yeah. And so now they got Buck James. So what, what you know, they're they're gonna they're gonna believe, I think. And and they're you know, they'll support. I mean, look at what they the way they support UCA. You know, I know UCA is not your favorite to support there, but um No, well, I mean, just I mean they're, they're Tech and UCA is not a rivalry anymore. I mean, it just UCA's outgrown Division Two. Yeah, just, you know, there were rumors years ago that UCA was wanting to jump back down a little bit. And these are rumors. I based this off what some guy said to some guy. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not reporting facts. No, no, no. So, but I mean, but you look around. There's no way UCA could make that move back down. No. No one I mean, would ever do that. They're, they're just, there's no way. The facilities at UCA are just unbelievable. Yeah. They're unbelievable. It would be, it wouldn't be fair for them to compete with D2 schools. And they've uh, had some decent success. It's not like they're, they're not competitive, you know. No, they're, no, they're FC, you know, they're, they're good FCS school. And, mm. you know, I think they're playing in the Lake Sun and all that. I just, you know, um, but you see the facilities they have. Even when they were Division Two, they built that amazing football stadium. Yeah. So I mean, it just it's going to be the the money's there, the facilities there, the want to's there, and I think he's going to have success because you just kind of mentioned the weight program. When we saw like the change at Tech, when we got better, the weight program changed, the mm-hmm. offseason conditioning changed, just the way. You go about, and that's what he's going to change. And uh, and if you go and if you go back and listen to last week's, you know that's the one thing Buck just harps on, and and that's where he builds his system is he starts with discipline in the weight room, and then working hard in practice. It's not, you know, a lot of coaches will come to you and say, well, we're going to win because we have, you know, the best offense in high school football, or we or, or the best offensive plays, and or the best defensive scheme in high school football. He doesn't – those are secondary to him. Those are important. But yeah. first and foremost is working out, lifting weights, and the weight room, and uh, working hard in practice. And I promise you they will do that. Now, you Clint – uh, you know, I was going to say, as our biggest rival – Trey Biddy, um, we we do get out for viewers every week on the podcast. That's right. <laughs> With Trey Biddy. Yeah, but yeah. He always says it's not always the X's and O's. Sometimes you got to have the Jimmy and Joes. And he That's is, right. He is going to change the appearance of the Jimmy and Joes. That's right. Okay, I'm sorry. You, you go on with your segue. I had it Okay, well, now I want to segue. And uh, normally uh, I, I do have – I didn't talk to you about this beforehand. But oh, I figured man. I figured you would uh, be okay with it. Yeah, I'm not I have a holy snikes moment that is not is different than our normal holy snikes because normally holy snikes is kind of a goofball thing. Yeah, this isn't a goofball thing. Um, but a couple of weeks ago, um, our former tenth grade head coach Randy Tapley passed away. Yes, sir. Um, now he had now when we had him in tenth grade, it was a tough year. That was probably the – may have been the most talented team we played on, don't you think? I, I, I've, I've, always, I've always said that because my senior year, we went seven and three. Well, I think we went seven and three my both years. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. But, anyway, go ahead, Travis. But, anyway, we – for one thing, we didn't have a quarterback that year. Um, that We had, I think, three quarterbacks get injured. Yeah. Um, and we ended up having to start a sophomore. Um, but um, Ra- Randy was, you know, and he had had some success. I-, I hate that that was the only year we had him because before that they had went to the playoffs. They had had some good season teams. He had had some success as a coach. But he decided to step out of coaching after that year, and he went on to teach uh, special ed, I believe, and then – he was always big on the rodeo thing. Um, trained, helped train a lot of uh, rodeo guys, which Greenbrier was known for back then. We had we had some in our senior class that got 
yeah. and other classes around us that got college scholarships for rodeo and uh, were some of the best in the state at that time. But uh, what what are some things you remember remember about Coach Tap? Just to kind of honor him a little bit. You know, I I was always, especially back then, I was a literal kid. Mm. If you told me to do something, I would do it. Mm. You know, and and one of the things that comes to mind is two days I was hurting, like my my I think my hip was hurting or something like that. And he goes, "Stay here." And told me right by the locker room. Y'all went down to the practice field, which was on the other side of the football field. Yeah. He told me to stay here. And so literally I stayed up there for like an hour and a half the entire practice. <laughs> he told me to stay here. Like uh, you were like it, you couldn't see the field house from the practice field. No, I was just like, Yeah. And he come up there, he goes. What are you doing? I go, you told me to stay here. And so I he's like, Are you like, yeah? Like, <laughs> like, couldn't believe that I'd done it, that I'd stayed there. Um, and then I do remember after man, that was a two and eight team. And and like you said, I think it was the most talented team we had. It had to be frustrating for him. Um, but I because I, I mean, me and you neither one played a snap on that team. Yeah. Um um, I you know, but I remember him coming in to the after the Perryville game when we won. Um, and I remember going, guys, you won, small. Yeah, I mean, it's like we didn't know how to celebrate, and he's like, yeah. God, y'all, y'all did it, y'all, y'all won a game. So I, I and I remember, you know, he, and, you know, the next year he he stepped down. I don't think he was, I don't think he was pressured to step down because it was probably the first bad year he'd had. Yeah, yeah. No, he had had the great years before that. Yeah, I've been in the playoffs and all that. It just, you know, they they graduated some studs before us. Yeah. Uh, back when they had Elvis and Elvis Easterwood and Lee Grooms and all them. I mean, oh, yeah. they had they had some had a, some incredible teams, but he he went, he, you know, he, he went his I guess he went to go work with the special needs kids. Mhm. And he went like he, I think he liked making a difference. Uh, he loved that. He was so patient. Yeah. He was so patient, so kind, you know, and he was even nice with me because he could have ridiculed me for being that kid that was like, that stayed yeah. there. But he just yeah. kind of like, he had, I'm sure he had a chuckle at my expense. And I'm sure he told that story once or twice. Yeah. About the kid, he goes, stay there. And he goes, okay, <laughs> I'm going to stay right here. <laughs> It's not like I was 10. I was like 15, 14 or 15. Yeah. <laughs> well, a couple of things I always remember about Coach Tapp is, first of all, how scared he was of lightning. Oh, yeah, he's petrified. Like, if there was a lightning flash, he would beat us to the locker room. Like, he wouldn't even announce practice is over. Like, he would just take off running to the locker room and be like, all right, we're done. He <laughs> just head out. And then, um, you know, one thing that's that's big now, you know, nowadays, a lot of coaches will, you know, look. Some people don't care about it or whatever, but the coaches will use foul language like crazy with with players. Okay, and I've had talks with coaches, and they've said, "Well, the kids just won't respect me if I don't talk to them on their level." And um, I just remember Coach Tap let uh, the word uh, piss slip one time during halftime. Yeah. And at the end of the game, he he was embarrassed and apologized for saying that. He said, I never should have said that in front of you all. I'm sorry. And um, that – I just had a ton of respect for that, man. I really yeah. did. Cause that no, none of us thought any less of him for saying that. That was a word. That's a word that some people don't even think of as bad language. Hard. We had heard far worse from coach Buckner. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, you know, it was one of those things, but he, he just believed in that he didn't need to use foul language like that. And, and he had the respect of the whole team without using it. 
And so I think that was, he was a great example to a lot of young men because of that. And then the other one, and I used this in my sermon this last week is, uh, his, the saying I learned from him, the haze in the barn, fellas. Haze in the barn, haze in the barn. The haze in the barn. You know, all the practice you've done, all the work you've done. You know, that's it's like a farmer getting ready for the for the winter time. They 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 stack the hay in the barn, so they got feed to feed their livestock. Just get that hay out of. Just go out there and play and get that hay out of the barn and use what you've got in there. So. Uh, that saying will always stick with me. Thank you, Coach Tap, um, to his family, where uh, you know his little brother Jay um, and the rest of the family. We're you know we prayers are with y'all. Um, but he was a he was a neat guy. So uh, sad to hear it, Coach Coach Tap. But I always remembering too as a coach, instead of just wearing a like coaching shorts all the time and <laughs> wear Wranglers with a big old yeah. belt buckle. <laughs> yeah. Since he's a rodeo guy. Um all right, Clint, here's the deal I want to talk about today. Sure. Well, this is off season. This is the time of uh -huh. year where a lot of coaches will say your season's made during these these couple months right now. Okay. And I'm saying, like, do we have to do a podcast this week? That's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So we want to think about what what would we like to see done in these few months? Like, what what would be your wish list? Like, what would be the one thing you would say? Okay, for the football team, I hope during this time, this happens. During the basketball this season, team or during now, huh? During the season or during now? No. What What do you hope happens during now to get them ready for the season? Okay. To yeah. that to um, well, and and that we see the fruit of in the season. Okay, that we see the fruit of in the season. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. The the thing that that happens in the off season. What What do you want to see come together during this off season? that's going to carry them on Do you think is going to make them have a better season. Okay. Okay. So what would be your, your, you know, for foot, we'll start with football. We'll do them in the order they come. We'll do football, then basketball, then baseball. What would be your, you know, for football, what would, would you hope is happening right now? That is, that is going to make a difference on the team that we see come September, October, all that. Well, right now it's Coach Sowers that's making the huge difference there. Uh, did I get that right, the strength and conditioning coach? Yeah, yeah. First year's Coach Sowers, yeah. Anyway, you, you hope that he's, uh, you know, you 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 know, there's all kinds of things like you you could say Dan Enos and KJ are getting on the same page. KJ actually made headlines. Somebody posted a snippet that KJ quietly left the building when no one was looking. Yeah, yeah. And, and people were like, "Oh, he's going to the transfer portal." Yeah, uh, rebel, rebel, rebel. He'd actually went to an elite quarterback camp in California. Is yeah, at so um, you want to see him, his and Dan's, Dan, you know, their chemistry develop. That you see, okay, he becomes more of a I don't say thinking quarterback, but less of a running quarterback mm -hmm. because. K, KJ being healthy, I, I, I truly believe, was the difference between going six and six and eight and four. Yeah, you're right. KJ is 100%. You do not lose the Liberty game. Mm -hmm. If KJ is probably 80%, you don't lose the Liberty game. Yeah. Let's just be honest with you. You know, if you had Jay, Jacoby Griswold as the backup where you could have set out the Liberty game, yeah. you probably don't lose that game. Yeah. You don't know what happens in Mississippi State, you know, and then you don't lose to LSU. Mm. LSU was not better than we were. They just weren't. No. Um, but that's my two cents. But you want to see that. But I also want to see that offensive line get bigger and stronger. And that that – because I, you want to see that unit come together because they've got three new starters. Mm. Um, you got three new starters, and one of your starters is playing a different position. Yeah. Than what he played last year. But I did see where he was also Limmer was the number one rated offensive lineman returning next year. Yeah. I, I think I saw I saw a mock draft that had him going in the second round. Um also, well he's gonna get some of that publicity because of just the 
freak athlete that he is too. He's so strong and athletic that yeah. that's going to help him. You know, people are going to automatically respect him because of that. But yeah, those are good ones. Those are good yeah, ones. Yeah, I, I really want to, you know, because, you know, you're thinking, you know, Kudis is probably going to start at right tackle now. You know, and so, but man, yeah. but at the same time, you got some of them younger guys that are, you know, because Limmer and uh, Latham will be gone after next year. So you have two new spots, and then you yeah. got Marion Harris, Chambly, you got all these guys. Whether it pays off for this year or next year, you're going to, you, you, you've got to make that impression now. Yeah. And, and Sam likes to have a sixth guy. Um, and last year it was Crawford. Before that, it was Ty Clary. Um, so, he, I mean, it's like no matter who went down, you know, Crawford was coming in the game. Yeah. I mean, he could play four positions and they can move Latham. And, and now you've got Kudis who's playing right tackle. They can also play center. Yeah. I, I don't know if you would see Pittman do that. And that's – would he would he move a tackle inside, or is he going to make Kudis play um, exclusively tackle, or would he put him in at center if something happened with Latham? Yeah, not sure. Yeah, well, I, have, I agree with you on those. Um, I'm sorry, I got long winded on. That I still one. think um, I, I I totally agree with you on the the Enos Jefferson thing. I think they're build them building their relationships a huge one, and. uh I think Enos was the right hire for Jefferson. I think he's going to be able to um, prepare him for the pros. And so I think you're right on the money there um, is how they – but I would add to it also Jefferson building a rapport with his receivers. Yeah. You know, we, we haven't seen a um, connection like he had with Tra Traylon Burks. Of course, Traylon Burks was a freak. Well, but we'd like to see him make a connection with a with a couple of those guys that he feels comfortable throwing to him. Uh, my biggest one, my big, my number one wish would be my biggest worry for the whole team is D back. Okay, yeah, you know we were already worried about that, um, but we felt we felt decent at corners. We were worried about safety, um, but then we had Quincy McAdoo in a car wreck. And there's a good chance he's not going to play this year. Um, yeah. I hate that, man. I hate it. And uh, I know, of course, more importantly, I know he hates it. Um, but we just need to get – we need him to get better. And um, so whatever that takes, if he's got to sit out this year, then that has to happen. But um, – Now, you know, let me ask you a question. Would you see – and this is just – I know I'm butting in here. Would, do you see them moving Mbake back? Because you got to think about it. he could start fall ball, you know, two a days off. He could start it off on the on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, I'm not sure because they um I mean they did have some of those, you know, those transfer guys from Baylor and stuff were were all corners. Yeah. And I think I think they're they were okay in number wise at corner. Okay. But I think safety was where I mean now you're with McAdoo, you lost the starter though, so may they might could bring Mbake back, but I think, I think that was a failed. I don't think that went as well as they hoped it would. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I kind of sense that. I kind of sense that he was just that he would have ended up just being a you know once McAdoo got over there, you never heard about Mbake being back there anymore. Yeah. And so I don't think. Well, uh, but you also saw what McAdoo did. I yeah. Mean, you know, McAdoo, and you hope he recovers this because, you know. Yeah. Cause he, McAdoo I mean, he, was one of them guys that could have made a living doing this. That's right. That's right. I mean. And, um, but I, my, my, my wish would be that those defensive backs, that they, first of all, that the new coaches can, can get, build some confidence in them and that they can, figure out the right schemes and everything for them to be successful. Um, I think I'm not sure we got the athletes, you know, like Trey Biddy, you know, our, our rival. Yeah, our <laughs> biggest said, rival. 
um, you know, he, he'll he'll talk about position by position of the Arkansas team. And when he was talking about it, he said, he said, you know, really safety is the only position where he doesn't see someone that could end up being a all SEC top. Yeah. If things worked out well, you know, like every other position, you know, he sees the possibility of somebody that could end up being all SEC. There's some, you know, there's a couple of receivers he even thinks that could end up being all SEC or, you know, tight ends and others. But he said safety is the biggest long shot we have. And so I think it's going to take some coaching. And so my wish would be that those coaches figure out what that's going to be. Uh, now some of that's going to mean to be our pass rush. Yeah. Just honestly, if, if we can get, if Landon Jackson and, and all those guys can get to the quarterback, that's going to make your defensive backs look a lot better. So anyway, next sport, let's talk some basketball. Basketball, shooty hoops. Shooty hoops. Shooty hoops. Now I've been watching all kinds of basketball here lately. I'm becoming an aficionado, if you will. Um, yeah. So, um, man, I, I hope right now they're playing a bunch of pickup games. I hope they're running up and down the floor at Bud Walton or the rec center, the practice center, whatever they have. I hope they're just doing that. I hope they're having some of them insane pickup games. Mm-hmm. But I hope they're playing on the same team a lot, and they're playing against Mason Jones, Isaiah Joe, Jalen Williams, those pro hawks, Dusty Hannes mm-hmm. are coming back in that gym. And they're playing pickup games against them, and they're developing chemistry. Yeah. Um, because I, when we talked about the subject earlier, I thought we were going to talk about, oh, what what do you want to see in the season? It seems like every year, the round December, we just hit a lull, and we just we blow through non conference, look real good, and then we hit, and then we yeah. hit the season, and you have that beginning of the SEC lull and. Uh, and I do agree. And, and like you said, the Bart Reed podcast um, was great. And, you know, one of the things I said during the season is like, I guarantee you in all them pickup games, Nick Smith was the alpha dog. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, and then you win in that game without the alpha dog. Yeah. Because, you know, Anthony Black's great, but he's the point guard, the distributor, and Nick Smith's more of an explosive scorer. Yeah. And I think they they missed that. Yeah, I just think they missed it, and and hopefully Nick Smith's right, and he has a you know gigantic pro career because mm-hmm. you know Bart Reed says he's 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 going to be good, good. Yeah, like best player in the league, good. Yeah, but or, or one of yeah. Well, yeah, we'll we'll find out. I mean, that time yeah. time will tell. But I, I want to see them. That's what I want to see. I want to see them building the chemistry together. Um, I want to see Devo developing into the leader. Mm. I, that's what I want to see. I want to see D. I want to see Devo make this Devo's team. How about well, that goes into what what I, my wish for him would be is, I want there to be a leader. I want there to be a floor general. I want to have a. I want there to be a Lee Mayberry, a Corey Beck, a, you know, a guy out there that the team looks toward, even a Jimmy Witt. A guy the team looks toward to be the the coach on the court, okay. And I, I want someone to develop that. Whether it's one of the, you know, I'm not, I'm not for sure Devo's wired to be that guy. I think they're going to look to him just because he's been there longer. Right. I'm not sure if that's a natural fit for him. I think there there's a possibility that Trayvon Brazil could be that guy if he's on the court. Um, because he is talented, and I think he tried to be a vocal leader from the bench last year, but it's just different when the, when you're on the court. Um, but it may be one of these transfers that, that have come in. Okay, it could be Marks or Ellis or one of the other guys. But whoever that is, um, I I just want I want him to develop somebody that's a that's a the guy that when they get in the huddle, you know, after a TV timeout or something says, okay, boys, let's lock arms. Let's do this together. You know, that brings them all together that, you know, um, that, you know, 
must trust his team. He doesn't. That's why he doesn't call timeouts a lot and things like that. But in order to do that, you got to have guys that are extension of the coach on the court. And and so, I just hope there's somebody that that, that right now is heeding that call. That's 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 uh, becoming that in these practices and like you said in these and these uh, pickup games and all the stuff that they're doing. You know, and for those of you that are like, you can't do that in today's transfer portal, Corey Beck was a JUCO player. Yeah. He was at Arkansas for two years. Yeah. And- oh, you can, well, I mean, and like I said, I, I mentioned Jimmy Witt. Yeah. You know, that team wasn't near as talented as this team is when Jimmy Witt came in. But Jimmy Witt's a guy who had been at Arkansas, left, and comes back to Arkansas. And he was a leader on that court. If you watch those games, man, he's the one bringing everybody together for free throws. He's the one, yeah. bring, you know, he's he was out there. Lead, he was a – and Musk talked about it. He was a leader on the court. And he wasn't necessarily the best player on the team. He was a good player. Yeah. You know, but he, he wasn't necessarily the best player on the court. But he was – he knew exactly what Muss wanted, and he did it. And so that's really what you need. I mean, you can you can get somebody out. You know, I mean, there can be arguments. It's harder to find that whenever you don't have someone that's, you know, ideally it would be a guy like Devo. Yeah. But I think last year I would just argue that I'm not. I, I'm not not nothing against Devo. Devo is a wonderful player. But I think Devo tried – him and Kamani tried to be that leader last year, and I I don't think we saw great results from that. Well, I, I think more maybe just leading by example. Yeah. I mean – No, he's going to lead by example. He's going to – yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's just with him, guys. So that leaves us with one sport. Is there That's right. Sport? Is there any more I mean, sport? there's other sports, but – Yeah, but we don't really – Yeah, know. let's talk about ones we know about a little bit. Yeah, so – Let's talk about baseball. Baseball. You know what I'm hoping? I'm hoping that the trainers are earning their money. Because okay. <laughs> let me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna say three names, and they're all gonna be starting pitching. Yeah. So you tell me, do you think we're more likely to win or lose a game with this guy pitching? Jackson Wiggins. Win. Brady Tiger. Win. Hagen Smith. Win. That is realistically your three man rotation. Yeah. That is realistically, and then you'd have McIntyre, Gage Wood, Fausch, all them guys. Adcock. Adcock, all them guys, mm. you know, coming coming in the game. I mean, to be your you know, your your bullpen. That is a s insane pitching rotation. Yep insane and if i'm not mistaken hunter holland could come back i think so yeah so I he mean, had surgery on his foot yeah but i mean if anything that helps maybe keeping him in arkansas exactly so but you know you you don't know you'll know no more after the draft for sure well uh, and also not just that look at the position players yeah you know i mean Wagner was out for a while. Well, uh, Wagner, Wagner was a senior. I, I don't think. Yeah, that's true. But the draft is what gets you. You got. I mean, you almost got to think after their junior year, they're probably gone. You know, I think part you got Parker Rowland coming back. Mm. He, he's a junior. I, I don't. Which I believe Arkansas got a transfer catcher from Texas Tech today. Yeah. Who had uh, like 11 home runs last year and in 2022 was the freshman of the year in the Big 12. Okay. Yeah. So that's a, that's a, a good get. Yeah. Uh, Stovall will be back. He was a Stovall and I believe Diggs and um, who's, who's the guy that ended up taking over at second base? Parker. Um, um, Holland. Not Holland, um, no. But he, but he was the number. He was actually the number one shortstop in the country coming out. His, uh, his Greenwood kid, yeah, Greenwood kid. So, 
Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll kick ourselves later. But I mean, he he had just an insane season. It, it's they're gonna have a. I mean, as long as Dave Van Horn's there, they're always gonna have a good year. Yeah, uh, Dave Van Horn knows the game. Um, it, it's it sucks that we didn't make it to Omaha. Yeah, we didn't make it to the Supers, but you know, it's baseball. That kind of thing happens. The best team don't always win. Well, my one wish is the same as yours is that they would stay healthy. Uh, yeah. That they would uh, get in in good. That they wouldn't in fall ball and in all the preseason stuff would not do things that would put them at uh, you know put them closer to getting hurt when it comes towards season. You know that they would the guys that need rest would get some rest. Guys that need some reps would get the reps, and uh, that they would come into the season fully armed. If you that a <laughs> pun intended, uh, <laughs> no, I mean it. It hurt losing Jackson Wiggins before the season started. Yeah, I mean that just hurt. Cause well, that and is- then Tiger going down so early. Yeah, you know because with hit, you know, you lose Jackson Wiggins, then. You still you're pretty set because you got Tiger as your, you know he's you know you're kind of thinking of him as he's going to be Cup. You know he, he's going to be your he's going to be uh-huh. your cops. Yeah, sorry, he's going to be your your designated closer man. You know he's guy that you can pitch multiple times in a weekend and and shut some teams down with him and, <clears throat> and then he gets hurt and that changes everything. And changes your whole game plan. And then when it came to the regional, we just ran out of pitching. And that's that's why we lost. We just ran out of it. We just didn't have enough available. And so Well, uh, I mean I mean you're thinking like all these guys, oh, they're fresh, they're fresh, they didn't pitch that much. The amount of innings they had to give you to get through that season, the yeah. arms were tired. Gage Wood has never pitched that much in his life. No, I mean they just they had it. They, the young arms did good. I mean they they had it's a heck of a season. <clears throat> I'm not trying to make excuses for them, but that's just the realistic part. Is like yeah. I said, they ran out of pitching and they. Um, but hopefully they're getting healthy, and you know all them guys that I mentioned have are going to have a year of college ball under their belts. You know, but just those three, the possibility of Hunter Holland coming back. I think he come back. He might not be able. To. <laughs> I believe yeah. he's at least got his COVID year. Yeah. Um. And then you know you got Wood. I mean that's that's you've got some you've got some arms in the arms race. Well, and you, and you got some. He's got a good recruiting class. He's got some freshmen coming up that are pretty salty too. You know that are pretty highly ranked. Some of them they're afraid are going to go pro. That are going to get drafted. But. Well, but he also David Horn is not he he knows who can win him games. Yeah, you know, like obviously, you know, like Caden Wallace started a true freshman. He he know he knows yeah. what he's doing, and so we go. I'm definitely going to trust him. Yeah. So Travis, mm-hmm. what you watching? Well, I want to talk about something that you wanted to talk about first. Oh, oh my bad, homie. And it's what you've been watching. I have been watching. I've been watching. I've been watching the NBA. The NBA, that's right. I know most of the time you you bring up like, hey, hey, you know, no one cares about basketball, and I know sometimes players have political stances that we don't always agree with, and and whatever, it happens and turn turns people off. But if you have not watched the Denver Nuggets play basketball, yeah. You you shame on you. That this is a team that plays the right way. Um, they they're they're starting five. They you know one of them like is Nico Djokovic, who is just what they call him the dad bod god. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the guy's just he's he's amazing, and the, yeah. their teamwork, their unselfishness. Yeah, the coach, the defense, you know. I mean, I think this team would be good even if it didn't have Djokovic. Yeah. Because their teamwork is that good. Jamal Murray, who played at Kentucky, um, I don't remember him out of Kentucky, but he's he's the 
He's yeah. become an un, unbelievable basketball player. It's just they're fun to watch, and I would encourage you to to watch the Denver Nuggets. I mean, well, I feel that it's it's Monday, so that we're recording this and game fives tonight in, in Denver, and I got a feeling it's going to be over. Yeah, but, but yeah, do do yourself a favor and and check this team out because this is a team that plays fundamentally sound, shares the basketball. It's just it's it's a fun watch. Well, and it's interesting because we've been in this era of super teams, and neither one of these are super teams. No. You know, they're they're not a where one superstar went and went to a team and brought in a couple other superstars with him. You know, these are you know, each team does have a superstar. What you talk about Djokovic, you talk about um what's his Jimmy name Buc- from Jimmy, um, Jimmy Buck Jimmy Butler from uh the Heat. They are legit superstars, but they're surrounded by guys that are just great, solid basketball players that fill their role and do what they are supposed to do. And it's legit team basketball. The second and I think that's I think that's one of the things that makes people pull away from the NBA is you didn't see that team basketball. You know, it was, you know, LeBron, Bosch, and Wade, and it was okay, LeBron, you go. Now here, Bosch, you go. Now here, Wade, you go. You know, or um, you know, Golden State here, Steph, you shoot now. Now Thompson, you shoot now. You know here, okay. Now Draymond, you kick somebody in the groin. You know, I mean, it's just, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was just, it was these super teams that wasn't, you know, it was just predictable. Well, Golden but, State signing Durant was, in a way, you know, made them a super team. Yeah. But man, they actually, I, I for the most part, Golden State did it the right way. They did, yeah, you're right. They, they, I mean, everybody hates on them. But <clears> Raymond yeah. was a second round pick, you know. Clay, I think, was a number nine, and Steph was barely a lottery pick. Yeah, I'm sorry, you go ahead. I interrupted you. No, talking. no, you're right, you're right. But I mean, he's having to rant. But I think those guys are becoming less and less. Like I, you're really mm-hmm. seeing the changing of the guard. And I'm seeing a lot more, you know, I'm seeing the game get back to fundamentals. And, and it, it's fun It's fun to watch. And I hope you see a whole lot less people jumping to, to just go play in this media market. Yeah. You know. Um, well, no, that's our fully allotted time for NBA. Yeah, yeah. yeah hey, so also, that's, that's but, but, the, but the two best players in this in this draft, joke, I mean, in this um, – in this finals, Jokic, second round pick, Jimmy Butler, last pick of the first round. There you go. So yeah, I just I just got that was a, that was a flex on knowledge. There you, go. there you go. All right. So you asked the question. Yep. What you watching? And you've brought this show up before. I have. And I finally watched it. And I gotta admit, I was blown away. Really well done. Jury duty. Yeah. Folks, if you've not, surely you've heard about it by now. But just in case you're under a rock or something, it's on Amazon Prime and Freebie. Okay. This guy answered a Craigslist ad. A very vague Craigslist ad. He lived in California to be on a show he thinks it's a documentary about the judicial system. He thinks it's a small documentary about the judicial system. He goes, he gets picked for it. Then he's got to get picked for the jury. Okay. So they're like interviewing these people as they're getting chosen for the jury. Okay. And then he gets picked for the jury. And so he gets, they do this trial they have a judge, they have lawyers. Yeah. The whole shebang. The catch is this guy, Ronald, is the only non actor in the whole bunch. He's responding to everything real time. Everybody else are actors. Everybody else has somewhat of a script it's mostly there are a lot of improv yeah, yeah. artists yeah. um 
a lot of improv artists that that are part of it, except for one guy, James Morrison, who's an actor. Mark Mardson. Mardson plays yeah. himself. Yep. With Cyclops, the X Men. But plays like a just a big headed Hollywood actor version of himself. Like, yeah. you know, self absorbed. And uh that he, you know, he got called up and he's trying to get out of it. And uh anyway, they it is it's hilarious some of the things they do. Um, you know, the guy he every now and then, like they said every now and then he would get close, like he makes one statement one time, he's like it's like I'm on a reality show or something. And like they said, after he would say things like that, they would just go boring the rest of the day. Yeah. And they had like the actors playing lawyers had like been lawyers before they were actors. Right. Yeah. The judge had been a defense attorney before he was an actor. He had never been a judge before, but he'd been in a court several, you know, many times. Um, it's just, it's different. That's the thing I liked about it, Clint. It was different. No, it was. And they've done a couple of these fake reality shows. There was the Joe Schmo show. Yeah. They did a long time ago. But th this one was well done. And the fact that, you know, they got Martin to do it, it was pretty, was pretty priceless to me. Well, and the thing is, it's done almost like a prank show. But they really don't prank the guy. They they really and the thing is the guy ends up becoming they and they wanted him to become a, a hero in the whole deal. Yeah. And they couldn't have picked a better guy to do it because he's just a super nice guy. He's just a good human being. And right. um, you know, he like one of the that uh is it Tommy, the little redheaded guy? I think so, yeah. That had that lived next that was in the hotel next door to him. You know, originally they wanted him to hate him. Like they wanted him, like him to just get on his nerves. But he like encouraged the guy, like ended up becoming like friends with him and stuff like that. And, and like, it was, um, if you watch it, you got to watch the, the last episode. You got to watch the, 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 the scenes, yeah. behind the scenes stuff and them kind of telling him about how it all worked out. But. It's eight episodes. They're short episodes, uh, yeah. so it doesn't take that long to get through all of it. It's um, it's really good though, and it's something different. I enjoyed it, yeah, for sure. It's a different show. Anything else you watching? No, no, that that's it. Just why? Well, a matter of fact, as soon as this podcast is over, I'm gonna go watch the rest of it. I feel like it's going to end tonight. So. Oh, the NBA, yeah, the NBA. Yeah, I figure I figure it's going to be over tonight. I, I really do. So. Yeah. All right. Well, folks, we appreciate y'all watching and listening. Please subscribe. Uh, like and share it while you're at it. Like, share, comment. Give us a thumbs up. Comment. Uh, all that kind of stuff. Tell us what tell us what you wish for the football and basketball and baseball team. What what you wish this offseason would give to them. Uh let us let us know what you think. Perhaps I have breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Well, when this comes out tomorrow, it won't be um it won't be breaking news anymore. But oh. that's fine. Pat Sajak retiring. What? Yeah, Pat Sajak. No. Yep. That's crazy. Yep. That, you think that, Bano will retire too? Yeah, probably. Probably so. Probably. You might, you might as well go out together. That's it for Will of Fortune. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Well, you I know, mean, I mean, you know, Drew Carey tries well on Price is Right. He was it's, so bad when it first started. It's still not the same, though. No. Um, you know, and I, I think um, I'm going to butcher her name, but I watched her do Celebrity Jeopardy. She does a good job. Yeah, and I think Jeopardy's done okay because they've had people like her and some past winners that they brought in to yeah, host it. Is... Stuff like that. I, th I think that's been people you know, that, that true Jeopardy fans, you know, which I'm not one necessarily, but I think true Jeopardy fans have appreciated that they didn't just get another face, another guy. You know, they 
Yeah. They tried to tried to stay connected. And so I think I've heard Aaron Rodgers did a great job when he guest hosted Jeopardy. Yeah, I didn't see that. I mean, I didn't watch it either, but I'm just telling you that's what I heard. Um, yeah. A lot of people want LeVar. There are people, you know, petitioning for LeVar Burden, but they're like, we don't want to just get somebody to take it. Because LeVar is in his 60s. Yeah. And so they're like, we, we want somebody that's going to, you know, be there for the long haul for 10, 15, 20 yeah. years. Anyway. <clears throat> All right, folks. Thank you so much for listening and watching. We appreciate you. And, hey, have an awesome week. Bye, everybody. Sweat. One. Come on.